Hey guys, I'm Jordan and you're watching Fixbook. After watching this video, your car problems stand about as much a chance as this laptop does against my hot lid. Now, make sure you stay tuned so you can see what happened to the laptop at the end of this video. And as always, don't forget to subscribe, like, and leave a comment down below. So today I'm going to be showing you how to change the spark plugs in your Toyota Matrix or Pontiac Vibe. And the tools you'll need for today include a 3 8 ratchet with an extension, a 10 millimeter socket, a spark plug socket, and some anti-seize. And you'll probably need new spark plugs, I'm assuming, if you're watching this video. Alright, so the first thing we'll do today is we need to get this cover off. I'm going to go ahead and take a 10 millimeter socket and extension here. And we got a nut here and a bolt there. So this guy off there. And I like to use the extension and socket sort of like a screwdriver. It makes things go faster, it speeds things up. And I'm gonna pull this guy out and this this bolt here will not actually come on out, but I have a feeling it sounds like he's out there. And then we've got these two clips to fight against here. I actually only have one right here and Oh, it seems that the my clip has popped out there. Yours will probably be a little bit harder to do. You just need to, there's an edge back here you can grab on and just pull until it pops. And there we go. So I've got the cover off now. And we can just about see what we're working with now. All right, so we're now looking at these cool on plugs here. I'm going to zoom in for us a bit. We're looking, these are the cool on plugs, which are directly above your spark plugs. And... You want to unplug each one of these, they're gonna, it might give you a little trouble. So I'd use two hands. One, your first hand, you're gonna kind of push down, it's gonna take a lot of strength to push that connector uh, holder on or thing there. <laughs> holder on or thing. Yeah, it's gonna take a lot to keep that thing going, and with your other hand, you'll just kind of wiggle. And I'm gonna push forward, push forward, and then back up. He's on there really good. And what you might want to do is you take your thumb on one side, and I know I'm getting in front of what you're seeing, but the idea is you're going to want to take this hand kind of push while you thumb down really, really strongly. There we go. I got him off there. And we're going to do this to each one of these guys. And man, it's on there good. I just want you to see me take each one off so you, you can believe it and do it yourself. Man, on there. There we go, there's another one. Another one. Oh, that book is on there. Man, you guys are tough. All right. Whew. Just taking a quick breather there. But I'm going to get them all. All right, so... Once you get all four of those connectors off, we'll go ahead and just uh, pull these. Well, we need to take the 10 millimeter bolt that's sitting there out, and then we'll pull the plug, coil on plugs right off <laughs> as soon as I retrieve my socket and extension. All right, now I've retrieved my socket and extension, and if you su survived the rigorous connector removing procedure, then you'll find the rest of the project pretty easy. Uh, you're going to go ahead and take your 10 millimeter socket with that extension and we'll just go ahead and begin by removing these bolts. And I'm, for the sake of not extending the video longer than it needs to be in just repetition, I'm going to only show you how to remove the spark plug and coil on plug for just this one cylinder because it's going to be exactly the same. I, just, I, I need the extra work out there. <laughs> That's why I chose to remove all the connectors, I suppose. So it comes out just like any regular 
plug wire would. Just gonna kind of work it and be careful. We got a expensive piece right here, so. There we go. And you can see it kind of looks like a spark plug wire at the end of that boot. And now we've just got to reach in there like any old other spark plug. And we'll use the extension and my spark plug socket. Oh, that's not the right one. All right, so I got the right spark plug side of this time, and I'm gonna go down in here. And if you haven't already heard me say, it, just make sure, guys, you do not. Oh, there we go. You do not do this while the car is hot, or right after you've driven the car, you will mess something up. There's a good chance you'll mess something up if you do it right, right after you've got done driving the car. So just keep that in mind. Remember that if you haven't already heard me say it. Pull this guy out, and when we put him back in, we'll put anoxies on him just to also help. Because if you tear up those threads inside the cylinder head, there's not a whole lot you can do. You can you can fix it somehow with a Healy coil. It's not understanding, but I I've never actually done that. But I've just heard people talk about it. But you don't want to go that route. It's just it's easier to not mess up in the first place. So. And if you have one of these spark plug sockets, mine didn't do its job right, it should have pulled the plug out with it, but it should grab onto the plug. I'm gonna see if he's out yet or not. Feels like he may be, no. This, this should grab right onto it, so I guess I have a little bit more to go. I'll just spin him out here. And there we go, there's our spark plug. All right guys, so this is our spark plug. And it's got white ashy deposits on it, so I really don't have enough time in the day to explain every different possibility and combination of things that could happen to the spark plug. But I will explain this one, and I will also leave a link. But I will explain this one, and I will also leave a link down below in the video description to take you to a place to show you what all your different readings on your spark plug will mean because they can be black, they can be gray, they can be, I don't know, completely brown. They can be all different shapes, colors, sizes, I don't know. They can have all different kinds of problems. But for the ash deposit, if you have what you're seeing right here, what that means is there the valve seal is leaking, which is true because <clears throat> this car is consuming oil and it's leaking and I guess getting on the the end of the spark plug there and it's turning to ash leaving ash deposits so uh, in order to fix this this ash deposit buildup that seems to keep reoccurring I would have to change the valve seals I I'm not going to do that right now but that would be the fix for the problem so check out the link below in the video description to figure out what's wrong with your spark plug it'll show you all kind of neat pictures and then give a description of each one so I'll, I'll let the, the link do the talking for me and instead of me doing all the talking and making this video like two hours long. Alright guys, and I just kind of blew the, those ash deposits off. The ash deposits didn't really concern me too much. And before we go ahead and stick them back down there in the cylinder, what does concern me is the cylinder head threads. The threads for the spark plug. So you take some anti-seize from Permatex and I mean there's other makers that make it too and I'm sure it's just as good. And we're gonna work out some some anisees here, and just gonna dab a little little dab will do you, and this will keep you from damaging the threads. So yeah, I, I like Permatex just because when I was in school they they came and did all kinds of demonstrations, so they they try and and get the students who are gonna be working on cars sold on it. So man, it makes good sense to me. I'm gonna educate you your customer before they're out there. So just dab it on there and I've done it pretty graciously. <laughs> you don't have to do it so graciously as I've uh, applied it there. Just really one little, I guess BB size ball, maybe two BB size balls, and then just kind of spread it across there. Now I'm gonna just drop them in here. And at first I'm just gonna start them in just like that. And we're gonna wait till it feels like he's snugged down. And the threads are in pretty good shape because sometimes you'll have to use a ratchet just to get it to snug down but I can still do it with my fingers so that tells me that the threads are in pretty good condition 
And I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna ready tidy this guy in here. And I don't want him over there. I want him right here. And I'm just gonna kind of feel. Oh, he's not. He's not down there, in there all the way. I just hit a hard spot. All right. So there, that that's snugged in. So we're just gonna snug it in, and then watch how much I go after you've snugged it. Just like that, right there. Almost a quarter turn. You just kind of push it. You're gonna have that smooth action there where you feel it really going down. You're just gonna about a quarter turn going there and then you'll kind of feel it come to a stop because you're not pushing too hard but you're pushing just hard enough that's how tight you want it in there so the trick is now getting your spark plug socket out of the hole and you're just going to take your extension and you're going to wedge your extension to the side as you can see I pulled them like that and it'll keep the socket on the extension so uh, that's all you got to do to Put your spark plug back in. Now we'll work on getting that coal over plug back on and plug your connectors back up. All right, so here I am. I'm just gonna take my coal over plug plug. I'm gonna stick them down in there. And oh, man, I, I'm gonna hate to have to replace the, these guys. They seem like they'd be quite the expensive piece. And I'm gonna take my bolt here and just screw back on there. It's like you can't you can't just replace the plug wires for forty bucks. You gotta get that whole coil over plug. Maybe they're not that expensive, but it just it seemed like it'd be such a a pricey piece or a pricey maintenance item. So I'm gonna get that with my extension and my ten millimeter socket, wherever it may be, and I'll just snug them on down there. Let's see so. That's snug tight right there, and we're working with plastic here, so you don't want to really go tight at all. So that's why you see my hand, I'm not even getting out towards the end there. We're just really just kind of got my fingers here, right here, and just that's about it right there. As much as I snugged it, so you really don't want to tighten that too much because it's not like it's going anywhere. So we'll now just plug our connectors back in, simple enough, they just click in, not nearly as hard as they came out. And then all I've got left is the engine cover. I don't even want to put mine back on, but I will. All right, so we've got our engine cover here. And you can look, you can see this is a pretty long guy, so you need to try and work him into the hole right there. And then at the same time, we'll, this stud will be our guide. And I'm just gonna look underneath while I'm getting that. And I can see that I got him worked in, because I looked underneath the cover. And then that's all good right there. We'll just go ahead and start our little cap, or nut cap. And then I'll grab my extension here. And I'll drive this nut in, or not nut, the, the long bolt. All right. Engines are supposed to be pretty, apparently. So I'll go ahead and do this guy in here, and he should snap down in there. You might actually, it doesn't sound like he's lining up. Okay, so you might have to, see my hand right here, I'm gonna push this way. You, you might just have to push the cover around a little bit to get the hole to line up exactly. And when, you hold, when you're holding it and you get it in there in such a way, you'll just be able to push it down in there and it'll snap down just like that. And then, just don't forget to make sure you got these guys tightened down just a little kind of snug right there you don't need to, to tear your valve cover up because that's what they're going into and that's it that's all that's required in changing your spark plug in your Toyota Matrix or Pontiac Vibe so thanks for watching and I'll see you next time Thanks for watching guys and don't forget to subscribe so you can catch all my new videos which publish Mondays and Fridays at 11 a.m. Pacific Time, 12 p.m. Mountain Time, 1 p.m. Central Time, 2 p.m. Eastern Time and I will see you then.